I know there's a lot of different um, diseases and problems out there, but I think cancer is one that is so universal. The first time that cancer came into my life was 18 years ago with uh, a good friend who worked for us. But then when you hear cancer in the same sentence with your dad, it makes it even more personal if that's possible. I would say the first time cancer became personal to me was about 12 years ago. My dad was diagnosed with brain cancer. He said, um, they told me today I have cancer. But at that point, we didn't, that's all we knew. That her concern was how are we gonna tell our daughter, our kids. I was diagnosed in October of 2015. Four brothers total. Um, I'm the third, Ben's the fourth. He was five years younger, the, the baby of the family. He said that he got a call back from his doctor and they had found a little speck, a little speck of cancer at the top of his esophagus. Basically a little over a year, I went from stage 1B um, to killing him. We knew before we had the confirmation, I mean he had a colonoscopy that they weren't able to complete because his tumor had gone through the colon wall. I'm thinking, oh man, it, it got us. I'm the one that's going through treatment, but everybody in my life has cancer because everybody's going through it. The end of radiation, um, you ring a bell. Friends, family, whoever wants to be there are there for you when you walk out of radiation. It's actually really beautiful. And um, when he was ringing his bell, it was the day after my brain surgery. So I was upstairs in the um, neuro ICU. So he was ringing his bell while his daughter was recovering from brain surgery. So, so I couldn't be down there with him. I want to be his legacy. I want, to, uh, I want to make a difference just like he made a difference in so many people's lives. So she just said that it's her life. She lived life with cancer. But I think her body uh, just came out. So it wasn't that she lost, it just, it was time. She fulfilled everything she wanted to do. He's like, I think this is, I'm getting close. And he didn't give me a time. And, you know, I said, I love you. And that was our last that's exchange. It's just difficult to see somebody go through something that you can only provide auxiliary care. But there's no reason I'm alive unless that she's around. And not so much, for two reasons, because I want to be around for her, but also because she basically wills it to happen, you know, um, with what she puts in the house and the, hey, we need to go walk and everything like that. Instead of bringing out um, bad things, I think it somehow emphasized his positive characteristics. You know, he remained optimistic. He did not feel good. One of the appointments when they said um, it was coming back for me and his was doing really good. And I, told, and I said, Dad, I go, you, I said, you should not feel guilty. I'm like, we need you to be okay. Because he said he wished he had what I had. And then his reaction is, but I have 30 years on you. He's like, I already raised my kids. You have raised yours. I think the one thing she would really say is, just be kind to people. Let it go. Just let it go. That's one of the things she asked me the last night we sat together, just to let stuff go. Oh. And uh, just be a better person. She always strive to be a better person. I don't see, think of it as a death sentence, I guess you could say. I know that there are drugs that are going to keep it in the right spot. When a doctor talks to you about trials, and a doctor talks to you about research and opportunities and things that could happen in the near future, you start putting the H Foundation into perspective that that money, that's where that money's going. For me, and for the rest of my life, it'll never not be something I think about every day. I mean, I'm gonna think about Ben every single day, but cancer's like the second thought. You know, there's all these other people in my life that I don't wanna lose more people in my life to cancer. They're everything, and they're, they, I want to watch them get married. I want to watch them graduate school. I want to watch them do everything. And I'll put it on my left hand because it's closer to my heart. 
Well, I'm inspired by his continued positivity, even um, when he wasn't feeling well. I raised my hand for Eileen, my love of my life. My dad is my hero, and he's my mentor. I've been inspired by so many people that have gone through this, but Dad will always be my inspiration as we go forward. He's all my inspiration. I think about him every day. I want to honor him properly. I want to do whatever I can. I think I'm alive today because of her. I call her honey, so honey's the way we do it. Watch over us. Father, Don't need no crime.